your sprint speed is limited by how much vertical force you can generate in a short amount of time. The reason why is because you need to generate vertical force to stay upright, and it takes time to generate this vertical force. This is your limiting factor because the faster you move, the less time your feet have in contact with the ground. And the less time your feet have in contact with the ground, the less time you have to generate the vertical force you need to stay upright. Think of it this way. When standing, gravity pulls you down. To stand, your legs push against the ground and generate vertical force to keep you upright. If your legs did not push force into the ground, you would fall. Kind of like what happens when weightlifters faint. It's the same thing while sprinting. You must generate vertical force to keep yourself upright. However, sprinting is different in that it has a flight phase, where you have neither foot on the ground. During the flight phase, gravity accelerates you downwards. When you hit the ground again, you have to re-accelerate yourself back up. Every stride in a sprint is therefore like a little vertical jump to balance out the acceleration downward from gravity. If you didn't produce enough vertical force to counteract gravity, then you would drop down on every stride. Kind of like what happens when people try to sprint on a treadmill at speeds greater than they're capable of. The problem we run into when sprinting is that it takes time to generate vertical force. As you move faster over the ground, you move past the point of contact on the ground in less time. And the less time your feet have with the ground, the less time you have to generate the vertical force needed to counteract gravity and stay upright. This is your limiting factor the reason why you can't run any faster. To illustrate this point, let's break down the physics of the best sprinters. During the flight phase, gravity accelerates the sprinter downwards. With every step, the sprinter must re-accelerate himself back up. To achieve this, the best sprinters in the world snap their foot as hard and fast as they possibly can to generate around five times their body weight in force in eight hundredths of a second. Five times one's body weight is an enormous amount of force, and eight hundredths of a second is a tiny amount of time to generate that force. If sprinters were able to generate more vertical force in less time, they would be able to sprint even faster. I know what you're thinking. There is no way that vertical force is my limiting factor. Horizontal force is what accelerates me forwards, so that has to be my limiting factor. Wrong. I know it's counterintuitive, but improving horizontal force will not improve your maximum sprint speed. I'll give you two examples to explain why. Let's imagine you used a rope to attach yourself to a car and the car sped up faster and faster. What do you think would happen? Do you think you'd suddenly be able to sprint like Dash or do you think that you would fall? Spoiler alert, you would fall. Despite the car giving you all the horizontal force you need to pull you forwards at increasingly faster speeds, you would not be able to sprint past your usual maximum speed because you would be moving so fast over the ground that your feet would not have enough time in contact with the ground to generate the vertical force needed to keep yourself upright. I cannot find any video of anyone trying this, however, we can see something similar occur when people attempt greater speeds than their usual maximum on a treadmill. As they increase the speed past their limit, they fall because they can't generate the needed vertical force fast enough. In the car example, you're moving too fast over the ground. In the treadmill example, the ground is moving too fast underneath you. The result is the same. Your feet have less and less time in contact with the ground to generate vertical force, which causes you to fall. Now, you may be asking, who cares about all this? The answer is that you should. Maximum sprint speed is important in several sports, and once you identify the limiting factor, you can then choose the right exercises to improve it. I will cover all of that in a future video. Subscribe and stay tuned.